Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, race number five at Santa Anita on Saturday is the grade one Frank E. Kilrow Mile. Let's take a look at this field. Big purse for the Kilrow, 400,000. We have a field of 10 entered. It is a wide open race. The three got stormy. She is no stranger to facing and beating males. But there are a lot of questions for her to answer after her most recent race. Yeah, it didn't run well off the layoff. We'll see if, if she can rebound. If she does, you know, she's supposed to be tough in this race. But it's just one of those races. And I feel like a lot of these graded stakes on turf in Southern California are like this. You could just make cases for just about everybody in here. And they seem to take turns beating they each do. other. Got Stormy certainly fits with these horses. And one of her great assets is her tactical speed. Timeform US agrees. They've got the number three Got Stormy right up close to the pace in here. You gotta figure that Kingley's gonna try it yeah. again, the number seven. He's likely to make the lead. The problem is he's made the lead in the past with various pace situations yeah. and various uh, going to the front and clearing off or trying to rate, and it just hasn't worked out. Yeah, I mean, he does sort of feel like one-way speed, and I suspect they'll be sending him to the front again. We'll see if he can last this time. True Valor's a multiple graded stakes winner going a mile at Santa Anita. They ran him in the Breeders' Cup mile. He was rated really hard, ended up behind a wall yeah, of yeah. horses turning into the stretch. You know, I actually think he ran a lot better than the running line looks, and they turned him back then to the Hernandez going five was. and a half. That was real sharp for him, and I wouldn't take that race and hold it against him. Last time out, you can make the argument that out of the horses exiting the Thunder Road, he had the worst trip. Yeah, I think he probably did. Um, it just it was just one of those trips that didn't work out for him. His rider, you know, he's one of those horses who I feel like every time he breaks the gate, you almost have to take a hold of him. Start he pulling. seems like he's hard to ride, but after that, he got this horse settled, but he never got him to the outside around the second turn, and then he had no choice in the stretch but to go to the inside. He got in very tight in there. I actually liked the way he was finishing in there. He was never going to catch River Boy, and he got a perfect trip. This horse ran pretty well in that race. Let's show everybody what you're talking about, because River Boy in the number two right next door, he sat the pocket, he's in the red, he got to the outside. Let's talk about True Valor. He's getting down to the inside right now. This really is not a comfortable spot. He's going to try to ease out again. He's running at the end. Yeah, he's running at the end of this race. You're going to see him right now still down on the rail oh. trying to rally. Now he's going to have to angle off again and come through between. He's just going to miss second. Again, I don't want to really take too much away from River Boyne because when he's good, He's actually really good, and I know he got a perfect trip in that race, but River Boyne ran that day. I'm going to give him uh, the respect he deserves. But True Valor's beaten River Boyne in the past. Yeah. Ohio's beaten River Boyne in the past. Next Shares has beaten River Boyne in yep. the past. And River Boyne's probably beaten all of those horses as well. Correct. That is the state of the Southern California Turf Division. River Boyne, almost a million dollars in earnings, got the trip last time out, beat three of these horses. Is just a very logical contender based on his overall yeah. body of work. Yeah, I just think he, he makes a lot of sense. You know, I, you know it, I think you could look at him and say he's not that easy to trust, um, but when he runs his good race, he's pretty good. Scott Stormy just had a wonderful campaign in 2019 as a four-year-old, beating the boys in the four-star day, good second in the Woodbine Mile, good second in the Breeders' Cup Mile, and then finished things off with the Matriarch, a grade one stakes race at Del Mar against Phillies and Mares. Now, seasonal debut, she's one to five. On paper, it was very hard imagining her yeah. losing, let alone finishing off the board. Let's watch this race. Jehoza Katz in good form. She got away to a a nice easy lead. Here comes Got Stormy, the number seven on the outside. We're just waiting for her to duplicate the four star Dave and the matriarch, yeah. and it doesn't happen. Yeah, just never really kicked it in here through the stretch. Disappointing return to the races. You know, I'd be willing to give her the benefit of the doubt if you just said, well, you know what, Jehoza Cat on her best day is pretty good, and she just got wired in that race. But she didn't even hold second or third in that race. It was obviously um, very disappointing. You don't need us to tell you that. If she rebounds, she makes a lot of sense in this race, and as you mentioned, her tactical speed just feels like she's going to be in a great position. And I like that they're running her here. They're testing her against the boys in a grade one. They're shipping all the way across yeah, the country. That's they feel point. she's doing well. And we might look back on this and say five to two on Got Stormy against this field is a gift. It's just hard to take her off of that last race. I think she'll be the favorite yeah. in here. Yeah. Five to two, three to one. Next Chairs is the number four. Next Chairs is a horse who's a bit of an in and outer to say the least. One time he'll win the race like the Shadwell Turf Mile, and then he won't run very well in a couple of other races. He won the C 
Biscuit two starts back going a mile and a 16th. And we'll watch that race right now. He was dismissed at 27 <laughs> to 1 in this race, but he beats a good field. River Boyne is in here. And yeah. it really all comes down to trip and pace for next year's. If he gets the right setup, he can beat these kind of horses. We see him moving at the end. Yeah, that was a real nice trip and ride. Beautiful for him. trip. Right up the inside. It opened up for him perfectly. He did the rest, but he's that kind of horse if he gets the right trip, as you mentioned. He needs a little pace. And then if he gets a clean run into it, he's just a really good horse. His best effort makes him really tough in here. Are you going to get his best effort? That's always the question. 10 to 1 on the morning line to yeah. me, though, is more than fair, considering he has a race or two. They ran him more in the Pegasus uh, World Cup after that. I don't know why they were so aggressive with him out of the gate and trying to push the pace. It wasn't his game. He was racing without Lasix. You can give a lot of excuses for next year's demand value. Let's talk about Selwood a little bit. If you're sick and tired of the graded stakes horses, maybe you want a new face. Selwood will be making his stakes debut in his 18th lifetime start. Did some good things last time out off the layoff at Santa Anita. Let's watch Selwood. He's in behind horses. He's going to finally alter course to the outside. He's in the red silks. He's a little green. He'll change back to his left lead. Yeah. This was a good field of two X's that he beat. Originaire's multiple grade two placed. He came back to win a two X with a 100 buyer. Yeah, I mean, this, look at this horse finish this race off, too. He got a really good trip oh, in this race, but once they wheeled him clear in the stretch, he really ran, and it was nice to see him do that, Dan, because this is a horse, he's always run pretty well on turf, but, man, a lot of seconds for him, like he just couldn't finish races off. He finished that race off. The number six Ohio won the Kilro Mile in 2019, where he's able to get close to a real moderate mm -hmm. pace, and there were some horses that had some trouble in behind him. Perhaps he was a bit lucky to win, but he got back to the winner's circle most recently at Turf Paradise, winning the Fitzsimmons for the second year in a row. Good pace going on in this race. He was the first horse to make the move into the pace. He's the horse on the outside right now. He's going to take the lead. We're going to see a little bit of race riding in the stretch as he drifts this horse to the outside, yeah. but he holds them off. Four next out winners emerge from this race, including River Boyne, who yeah. finished third. This is a classy old horse. I'm not going to take anything away from it. I like to see him getting back to the winner's circle in that race, but all, all in all, um, you know, I thought he maybe took advantage of a good trip in that race, and if you go back and watch the replay, River Point just had all the worst. If it broke from a far outside post, could never get over to save any ground, was in no man's land for most of that race. This horse ran well, and he's got races that make him a contender in here, but I'd be looking out. I think the key to Ohio's success is that over the years he's settled down and he's learned how to rate. He was very headstrong early in his career. Now he is willing to wait till the rider asks him to run. Kingley is up next. He is a graded stakes winner on the turf. You know where he's going to be in the early portion of the race. He's going to be on the lead. I just don't like the way he fails to finish finish his races off. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a big problem for him. He's very fast, and he's dangerous speed in this race. If he gets loose, um, they might have a tough time reeling him in. He's run some pretty big races on the grass, but as you say, boy, he has a tough time finishing races off. And this it's not like he's facing a, a bunch of pushovers. I mean, this is a pretty good field. Frontier Market was graded stakes place for Chad Brown last year as a six-year-old. He went through the auction ring at Keeneland November, and he was purchased by some pretty shrewd connections for $170,000. Not bad for a seven-year-old gelding. He ran in that Thunder Road last time out. He had to split horses five wide into the lane. And I thought all in all off the layoff, he yeah. ran well as the beaten favorite behind River Boyne. He's getting blinkers for the first time. Seems to be working well. Maybe it's his turn. Yeah, I mean, maybe it is. We'll see. I can't say I was a huge fan of his when Chad Brown had him, but I respect the fact that he just kept getting better. Um, last time, I think if you go back and watch that Thunder Road, um, he was never a real threat in there, but boy, was he coming with some late momentum in that race. The number nine is Sash. This horse never could break into the stakes ranks in Great Britain, but he sold for a lot of money, over $400,000, and was brought over here, and he finally made hay with the addition of Blinkers, second time for Mark Latt. Let's watch Sash's most recent win. It's only an entry-level optional claimer. He's on the outside right now. He showed a lot more speed yeah. with the addition of Blinkers. I think there's a question as to whether this is too much for him. Yeah, they're stepping him right up in class here. And it's not like when you look at his um, European form that he was some kind of group horse over there either. So we'll see if he classes up. you see him just hold on at the end of that race. He's got to do better than that. The 10 Desert Stone, you know what you're going to get from Desert Stone. He's going to break bad. Now, whether yeah. it's breaking five lengths slow, as we've seen from him in the past, or whether last time out in the San Gabriel where he basically broke sideways, He's going to be spotting this field lengths, and if there isn't a lot of pace and if he doesn't get the right trip, he could be in trouble. He didn't break last time out, 
but he got the right trip. He was able to save ground at yeah. the back. He altered course through horses. Let's watch Desert Stone turning into the stretch. He got a lot closer to the pace in here. He's in the white blinkers, angling to the four path, and now he finishes things off. He beat the perennial bridesmaid, Cleopatra Strike, yeah. who came back to run second again in the San Marcos with a 96. Yeah, this is still a good effort. Nice effort. Stores. He angled them out. I like the way he finished here. He wanted a lot easier, I think, than that neck margin would suggest. You liked him that day. You were 100% right. He's going to be last early in this race. Can he come to the outside and close this whole field down? It's not out of the realm. I don't think, I don't think he's impossible in here. He's got a break. It was his first race off a seven-month layoff also. And while, listen, he broke to the side, it wasn't a disastrous break for him. We'll see what we get. You just think from this outside post, mm -hmm. even if he does break, they got to take him back to avoid losing ground going into the first turn. I'm a big fan of Desert Stone, but like with many of these, I'm not sure I can trust him to run two in a row and win two in a row at this level. Top pick time for the grade one Frankie Kilrow Mile. I think this is a race where we're going to try to look for value. You're getting six to one on True Valor. I really think he's dirtied up, Mike. The Breeders' Cup Mile, bad trip. Yeah. Joe Hernandez, that distance is too sharp. The Thunder Road, not a great trip. I like him breaking from the rail because he's going to get covered up right away. Yeah, I like all those things about him, too. It's the reason that I put him on top. And I think a lot of different horses can win. I don't know what kind of price he's going to be in here, Dan, but I don't think he's going to be too short of a price. If he gets the right trip, this is a field he could easily be. Next shares never gets bad. He won the Shadwell Turf at 23 to 1. He won the Sea Biscuit that we saw at 27 to 1. He's 50 to 1 last time out. He's 10 to 1 on the morning line, and I'm curious to see if next shares can stay within range and kick these horses down. Uh, I think a mile's good for him. Maybe some folks would say a mile and a 16th, but I want to give next shares a chance. 4285 for me. It's as easy as 1234 for Mike. It's the grade one Frank E. Kilrow Mile, approximate post 130 Pacific. Good luck.